Hello everybody. Thank you once again for downloading and listening. My name is James Williams. As I've mentioned before, it has been a fun but busy couple of weeks for me. Um, I don't regret any of it. Uh, since my last podcast, I've done several interviews on the SB's red carpet, the red carpet for DirecTV's 25th anniversary celebration for Sunday NFL Ticket. Um, had a chance to go to Pac-12 Football Media Day and talk with players such as Khalil Tate, the quarterback from Arizona. He also could be considered a favorite for the Heisman Trophy when it's all said and done. You also have Washington State safety Jalen Thompson, who also went to Downey High. Uh, I, too, am an alumni of Downey High, so it was good to chat with him a little bit about Downey High and the head football coach we had in common, Jack Williams. I also had the opportunity to chat with Josh Woods, a player I covered in high school. Um, He's now playing linebacker at UCLA, so it was good catching up with him and seeing how he was doing. Um, He's grown up quite a bit, not only physically, but um, at maturity as well. You know, that's what a Division I college football program can do for someone like Josh. I also had the opportunity to talk and listen to some of the head coaches in the Pac-12 conference about the upcoming season. One of the ones I was able to talk to was Mike Leach of Washington State. And so with that being said, one of the first interviews I have for you guys on this podcast today will be my uh, questions asked during the press conference of both Jalen Thompson, who I mentioned went to Downey High, the same high school I went to. And then I also talked to Mike Leach a little bit and get his thoughts on Jalen Thompson Uh, for the upcoming season and his time so far at Washington State. He's about to enter his junior year, so it will be good to follow along with what he does and see how he goes about the rest of his football career and representing Downey High. um, You're from Downey, Um, right? So you're an hour from home right now. What's that transition been like to come from Southern California and, and go up to Washington State and, and have a prominent role up there. What, what's that whole transition been like? Uh, it's been exciting, an exciting journey. Uh, it was tough at first, you know, adjusting. Uh, but when I got up there, I got in the film room, go with the coaches, and ended up playing my freshman year, which has been great as well, and it's given me uh, the experience, you know. What do you want some of these SoCal kids to know about Pullman and, and, and life up there? Uh, it's not hot, you know? <laughs> it's not hot at all. I came up there the first uh, the first year with uh, shorts in the winter and stuff, so that was a mess up by me. But, yeah, pretty much just want them to know it's a good school, you know, a great atmosphere and everything, great college time. How would you describe your time at Downey, and how do you think that – kind of prepared you for this level of football? Uh, my time at Downey was great. You know, I was the, uh, you know, I played corner, but uh, that's where I really started uh, playing DB was at Downey. My head coach, Jack Williams, mm-hmm. uh, helped me with my technique. He helped me with everything. And, uh, yeah, I feel like he got me ready for the college level. Uh, tell me about Coach Williams. Uh, he was my coach as well yeah. in high school. I went to Downey as well. Okay. Um, so I'm familiar with with, uh, with Jack Williams. Tell me a little bit a little bit about him and, and his interaction with the players. Oh yeah. Um, I know like uh, back when I was in high school there, he was only the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Now he's the head coach. He's changed a lot. The yeah. field, the you know you guys have the bags, New Jersey, everything. Yeah. Tell me about the, the mindset he has for you guys over there. Um, he has a mindset of like a he's a younger guy mm-hmm. of course, but. That's what I feel like our players like most about him. He's a younger guy. He, he can relate to us better, you know. And also, he's been through it all. He's been through uh, college. He went to, uh, gosh, Azusa Pacific. He went to a couple at uh, BYU. Mm-hmm. Like, he's been through this whole road already. So uh, just a guy like him coaching us and helping us, uh, I feel like it's, it's only benefiting us. That they don't take no crap from anyone. They want us to be on our, be on our stuff, be on, do our job, and uh, be the best that we can be. What's different is uh, <laughs> Coach Leach is more of a, I guess, a free spirit. Uh, he kind of speaks like when he wants to, he does what he wants, you know, but that's just Leach, that's just how he is. With Coach Williams, it's more just, uh, he relates to the, to, the, to the younger players, I guess, more. How much different will the defense be without French? Are there any changes or is it the same thing? Uh, it's, it's a little bit of changes, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, we're still a speed D, we still run to the ball, and we still try to make plays out there. And talk to me a little bit about Jalen Thompson. Um, what improvements have you seen and what are your expectations for him this season? 
Uh, well, he, he, you know, he came, he came to our place pretty ready to play. You know, he was one of those guys that didn't really have any physical filter or anxiety. I mean, he just exploded out there on the field. Um, and he's uh, stronger and more athletic than he looks. Like, you know, I mean, uh, he's whatever size he is, but he's stronger than that. When he hits something, it just flies. His vertical jumps off the charts. And then, you know, just plays with a passion and an intensity uh, that rubs off on other players um, because they see it and it energizes, you know, the, the unit out there. Um, no, he's an impressive guy to have. I mean, uh, uh, he's gotten just kind of incrementally better as far as because he got older. But um, he had a pretty good running start out there as far as being a good player for our team from the beginning. And you think uh, being an early graduate kind of helped that process, getting him in early with your guys' program? And yeah, the most important thing with that is you've got to be inclined that way. You've got to be ready to do it. If you're, if you're sitting there <clears throat> wishing you were still in high school, going to prom, uh, finishing up track season or whatever, um, well, then you need to stay in high school. But uh, no, the, the day he walked in the door, he was ready to go and he was excited. And, um, He's one of those unique guys that didn't have this big adjustment where, you know, have the whole, well, I'm not sure what I should do here. I mean, I mean, I can't say he was right 100% of the time, but, I mean, no, it'd be, it'd be full speed, and then you'd say, uh, this way, not that way, or, you know, uh, like this, not like that. I mean, he'd do that, but everything was full speed. You never had to work on how, how, how fast to go, you know, or, some kind of uncertainty as far as his technique or assignment, you know. No, no, full speed. You never had to work on that with him. And that puts you ahead, too, if, if you like. And there you have it once again, my interview with Jalen Thompson and Coach Mike Leach of Washington State. Now we move ahead to my interview with Juju Smith-Schuster of the Pittsburgh Steelers, someone I had a chance to talk to on the red carpet of the NFL Sunday ticket celebration I mentioned earlier in the show. Had a chance to talk with him. He is a former USC Trojan, so someone who is not too far removed from the college football game. Um, he has the potential to be an impact player, not only for the Steelers, but in the NFL. So he is someone to keep an eye out for. It's lit. <laughs> Juju, I'm sure you probably be probably have been busy this offseason. I know you play a lot of video games. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you signed an ambassador deal. If I I'm not mistaken, you might tell me a little bit about that and, and what that meant to you, you know, kind of, you're, so you're making money doing the things you love, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, what, what uh, does that mean to you? It's, it's, it's pretty big, man. It's, uh, man, I love to play football mm -hmm. and I love to play video games and to be able to get paid for both and to be an ambassador on, one of, um, you know, on a full, the video game side is huge. And it, it's fun. Like I said, it's uh, something I love doing. I've been doing it for a while. And at the end of the day, I'm just trying to be a businessman. I'm sure, uh, much like me, I'm sure you did the same thing playing Madden growing up. You'd make yourself as, as a character and whatnot. Now that you are in the league, you've had your, you, they, the game, you're in the game already. You don't have to make yourself. What, what was that moment like for you, being someone who loves video games and play football? It's, it's awesome. It's the best. I mean, I'll tell you this. If I don't get my catches and touchdowns uh, during the, uh, the, the season, during the game, I go home that night, turn on Madden, you know, throw a couple tubs in my way, a couple celebrations, uh, you know, it's turned up a little bit. And what did you think of your Madden rating? I mean, I, it, it is what it is, you know, I'm not going to fight about it, uh, I'm not going to cry about it, I'm going to just let my work prove for itself and just go, go off of that. Um, you're from Long Beach, you, you played at USC, you spent a lot of time in Southern California, you got drafted to Pittsburgh. What, what is the scene like? I've never been to Pittsburgh. What is the scene like out there in Pittsburgh? It's awesome, man. You talk about you go to Long Beach Poly, a powerhouse school. USC, powerhouse yeah. school. Pittsburgh still is a powerhouse, you know, team. Man, it's awesome, man. I mean, if you get a chance to come out to a game, or even when we play against Oakland, that'd be a great, you know, great experience. But, um, like I said, I love that team. You know, I love the coaches, the vibe. Uh, you know, we're, we're just as one, just as equal. And if I'm not mistaken, are you a Lakers fan? Yes, I am. What do you think about LeBron coming to L.A.? That was my plan all along. <laughs> that was your plan all along. You know, plan B. You know, he could have come to Pittsburgh. Got to get him to come to L.A. And, uh, you know, it's just big things, big moves. So uh, it's safe to assume we'll see you out at some Laker games sometime for, this For time. sure at the Laker games. Get your tickets now. It's selling out fast. 
I'm about to be a season ticket holder. And there you have it, my interview with Pittsburgh Steeler wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, quite a character, and not in a bad way. Um, you know, if you follow him on Twitter, you know what he's like. He, he's a good dude, and I'm wishing him all the best in his career as he starts his sophomore season in the NFL. Moving along, um, out in Brooklyn, the Overwatch League Grand Finals has concluded the season. The inaugural season has concluded. Um, the London Spitfire are the grand champion. They did win stage one, uh, but fell on some hard times after that. You know, they were kind of just getting by. Um, didn't reach the stage finals, I believe, uh, after that. At least they didn't win any more stage finals after that. Um, the NYXL were pretty dominant, and with the grand finals being in Brooklyn, everyone kind of had the NYXL penciled in as the winner, or you know, as the favorite going into the grand final. They were knocked out in the semifinal, and you had the London Spitfire and the Philadelphia Fusion representing the Overwatch League in that final. Um, so, you know, shout out to the Fusion, shout out to the Spitfire who did win the grand final, as I mentioned. Um, and a special thank you to the crew over at Overwatch League. Nothing but accommodating uh, when I ever went out there to cover uh, some of the games during stage play. And with that said, I am going to end things right here. Uh, for more interviews like you heard during this podcast, go ahead and check out jhwreporter.com. All one word, jhwreporter.com. That is my website. Uh, you can keep up with everything I'm doing over there for my interviews, my podcast, uh, my Twitter handle, and my Instagram are over there as well. Go ahead, give me a follow um, and subscribe as well uh, through the various links on YouTube, iTunes. Um, if you enjoy the podcast and what you're hearing, I hope to have some more good stuff for you guys. Um, go over to the YouTube page. I got uh, Dak Prescott in an interview, uh, Stefan Diggs and his mother. Um, we're also in a joint interview together, so that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, like I said, stay tuned for more stuff. Um, I'm trying to make this podcast a weekly thing. Um, some things will come up, but we'll play it uh, by week. And uh, you can always catch me for updates, like I said, on Twitter at JHW Reporter. Thank you guys again for listening, and you guys have a great week.